Hello everybody, this is Dr. Omende. We finalize on uh, bone and, and cartilage, okay? So this is where we had reached, just a recap. We had mentioned that bone has two parts, the inner spongy and the outer compact, which is hard, and the outer compact is covered by periosteum on the outside and endosteum on the inner part that separates it from the spongy layer. And the compact bone, of course, has cells and extracellular matrix. And we said we have four types of cells, osteoprogenitor cells that are stem cells. They mature, become osteoblasts that lay down osteoid. And this osteoid um, is what forms the matrix of bone. Then after laying down osteoid, the osteoblasts become osteocytes, which are housed in lacunae, okay? And they can be reactivated to lay down bone whenever needed. And the last type of cell we said we have the osteoclasts, which are large gigantic cells that are multinucleated with five to 15 nuclei. And they have a ruffled border with microvilli and they're housed within a house-shaped lacunae and are members of the monocytic phagocytic system. Their main role is to cause bone resorption. Their lysosomes contain proteolytic enzymes that are able to break down bone, okay, to help with, um, keep bone healthy, okay, and also to regulate blood calcium levels. So when calcium is low in blood, osteoclasts will break a bone and release calcium into blood. So the histology of compact bone, we see it, um, um, with the matrix, we said we have um, extracellular matrix as collagen type 3 fiber and ground substance which has organic and inorganic portion. The organic portion has the proteoglycans and the glycoproteins and the inorganic portion has the calcium hydroxide, calcium phosphate and calcium hydroxide appetite. Okay, that's what makes bone hard. So this is the how ships. Um, sorry, this is a Havasian system. So Havasian system or osteon is what forms the microscopy of compact bone, histological organization of compact bone. So centrally, you have a Havasian canal that contains neurovascular structures. Surrounding it, you have concentric lamellations of collagen type 3. Within the lamellations, you have lacunae that are housing osteocytes. And this osteocytes send out cytoplasmic extensions, these thread-like uh, cytoplasmic extensions, which are housed in canaliculi. They enable communication between one osteocyte in a lacuna and an adjacent osteocyte in a lacuna. Now, the neurovascular structure in a Havasian canal are able to communicate with each other at 90 degrees using a Vokman's canal. So this is a Vokman's canal. So Vokman's canal helps to communicate one Havasian canal to the other at 90 degrees. So basically, this is the structure of bone. So bone are ossified through two mechanisms, intramembranous ossification, where from the mesenchyme that is formed, the cells transform to bone cells and start laying down bone. And we have intracartilaginous ossification where from the mesenchyme, you first form cartilage, and then cartilage will ossify to form bone. Okay, so intramembranous, the cells change directly into cells of the bone. So this is mainly at the flat bones of the skull and also flat bones of the face. So those are intramembranous ossification. And also the lateral third of the clavicle ossifies via intramembranous ossification. So in intramembranous, mesenchymal cells converge to osteoblasts, which start laying down osteoid to form bone. Okay, so the lay, osteo, osteoblast will lay down osteoid and then to form a center of ossification you have deposits of organic bony matrix that will come in so that's what happens so this is mesenchyme okay and the mesenchymal cells usually aggregate then they differentiate into osteoblasts which began ossification process so from mesenchyme to bone so then you have neurovascular structures that will invade then you form your full bone so this is intramembranous ossification. So the bony spicules that form from the osteoblast will connect and then blood vessels will start forming in between them. And over time, this is what you formed your bone and the bone is vascularized and the central portion with numerous blood vessels become your spongy bone, okay? And it may be removed to form the medullary cavity of the bone. So 
Then we go to intracartilaginous ossification. This is where the cells that are formed um, um, become cartilage, hyaline cartilage, before it ossifies to form bone. So this is mainly in long and short bones. Remember, intramembranous is in flat bones of the face, of the skull, flat bones like the lateral end of the clavicle. But hyaline, uh, intracartilaginous or endochondral ossification from hyaline cartilage to bone, that is in long and short bones. So we'll ask you, what are the zones of ossification of bone from hyaline cartilage or in the endochondral ossification? So you start with the resting zone. Okay, so how will this cartilage form bone? So cells are resting, they are quiescent, they are resting. Then they start proliferating. In the proliferating zone, they will have features of protein synthesis, mitotic spindles, features of mitosis. Cells are, um, you can see the nuclei has divided. Cells are dividing, you have mitotic spindles, you'll have centrioles, all those features of different stages of mitosis. That is in the proliferative zone. Hypertrophy means the cells are now larger. Okay, so that's the next zone. And then after they become large, we have calcium that comes in, then we have ossification that starts taking place. So you have a resting zone, proliferative zone, hypertrophic zone, then ossification zone. Okay, so um, maturing cartilage is the hypertrophic where they've increased in size and start secreting alkaline phosphatase, phosphate and then calcification zone you have your calcium now starts coming in leading to ossification and blood vessels now grow and you bring all the other cells so those are the zones resting zone proliferative zone hypertrophic then as you bring in calcium ossification occurs so in intracartilaginous or endochondral ossification osteoblasts will lay down matrix along the calcified cartilage so you have your cartilage that has different zones resting proliferative hypertrophic and ossification zone so when you reach the ossification zone which is calcified osteoblasts now come and start laying down matrix and then after that they remain in a quiescent stage within the matrix as osteocytes okay so and um if you want to remove unwanted bone the osteoclasts come in and cause resorption so usually bone will grow at the epiphyseal growth plate which is made up of hyaline cartilage and cartilage remember is covered by perichondrium hyaline cartilage okay so usually as the bone grows it outstrips cartilage formation okay so there's no cartilage for further growth the perichondrium with time in endochondral ossification it will convert to periosteum because you're forming now bone from cartilage so you grow from your epiphyseal growth plate as it's ossifying and cells are multiplying and hypertrophying so that way the bone is growing but later on ossification will occur all the cartilage will form bone so bone formation outstrips cartilage formation then with time no cartilage will be seen and the perichondrium is now converted to periosteum so you need to know which hormones regulate bone growth and where are they produced we have vitamin d calcitriol produced by the kidneys and of course this will ensure your calcium and phosphates is absorbed in the food that you eat so that you're able to take calcium and phosphate to bone pituitary gland produces growth hormone which will help with the growth of bone so they'll stimulate osteoblast to cause to lay down more bone matrix and bone will grow thyroid gland will produce thyroxine it just works as growth hormone stimulating osteoblast to lay down bone matrix and bone will grow sex hormones the ovaries in female produce estrogen and the testes in males produce androgens and these will stimulate osteoblastic activity so you lay down more bone matrix and Moreover, estrogen usually stimulates the closure of epiphysis and this occurs earlier. So closure of epiphysis in females is earlier than in males because of the effect of estrogen. We have parathyroid hormone produced by parathyroid glands which are on the poles of the thyroid gland. These usually stimulate osteoclastic activity. Parathyroid hormone will cause osteoclast to break down bone, that's bone resorption bone contains calcium so when you break down bone that calcium enters the blood so you elevate calcium concentration then lastly we have calcitonin calcitonin is produced by what you call c cells or the parafollicular cells of the thyroid thyroxine is produced by thyroid follicular cells while calcitonin is produced by parafollicular cells of the thyroid or the c cells this counteracts parathyroid hormone 
Parathyroid was stimulating osteoclast to break down bone and increase blood calcium ion concentration. But calcitonin is the opposite. It inhibits the osteoclast. Parathyroid stimulate osteoclast. Calcitonin inhibit osteoclast. So there will be um, less breakdown of bone. So when your calcium level is high, you don't want more calcium. It's already high in blood. So calcitonin now comes in to prevent you from absorbing more calcium from food, absorbing more calcium from your urine back to the blood, okay, and inhibit osteoclast so you don't have calcium coming from bone to blood. So when calcium is high, calcitonin is produced so that you don't absorb more calcium in the kidney, you don't absorb more from GIT, and you don't release calcium from bone. So it inhibits osteoclastic activity. So calcitonin reduces calcium level in blood, while parathyroid causes an increase in calcium level because it will cause you to absorb more calcium in GIT, absorb more calcium in the kidneys, and also stimulate osteoclast to break down bone and increase calcium level. So when you have low calcium, parathyroid is produced. When you have high calcium, calcitonin is produced. So finally, just to revise, uh, cells in isogenous groups of two to six, matrix is clear, collagen is not visible, perichondrium is present, definitely higher line. Okay. We have perichondrium is present, cells in lacunae, one cell in lacunae, cells are not in groups. Fibers are seen in the ground substance, and the fibers are branching and anastomosing elastic cartilage. Thick bundles of collagen type 1 fibers, no perichondrium, cells in parallel rows, definitely fibrocartilage. Haversion canal with neurovascular structures, concentric lamellations of collagen type 3, osteocytes in lacunae communicate via cytoplasmic extensions which are housed in canaliculi. Haversion canal communicate with neighboring Haversion canal at 90 degrees using a Volkmann's uh, canal, definitely microscopic organization of bone. Are there any questions? You ask your colleagues. Thank you.